Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we have been taught the revelation of the things that God desires to do in our lives. Please follow me. We have been taught that God has an agenda and that he seeks to make us ambassadors. That there is a prophetic destiny for everyone. Say after me, I have a prophetic destiny. Say it, I have a prophetic destiny. And this is a revelation of the prophecy over our lives. Hallelujah. That there is something God wants to do. There is something God wants to make out of us. There is a debt that we owe our generation that we must pay in our lifetime. And that God is trusting us. Hallelujah. So this is prophecy. And on the other side, we have the manifestation and the fulfillment of this prophecy. Are you following me tonight? When we begin to walk in the experience of that which has been spoken concerning us. So many of us have been taught what it is that God has written and said concerning you and your life and family and destiny. And through the eyes of prophecy we can see that which God is going to do. We have in our minds a picture of the kind of destiny. But what I want to teach tonight is how to manage the seasons between prophecy and their manifestation. This is the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest revelation that you need to cap up these teachings on influence and greatness and the kingdom. Because it is through this journey, brothers and sisters, that many fall by the wayside. Are you getting my point? It is through this journey that many never make it there. there it's, it's like a marathon. So many people, hundreds of people standing with all of their, their athlete apparels. But in the final analysis at the end, only maybe less than one or two or three percent of those people ever arrive at the finish line. And I want us to finish strong. Hallelujah. Many of us are at this season of our lives and we've been praying, fasting and say, Lord, explain to me what meaneth these things? What is the mystery behind the things that are happening in my life? What season am I in? Please listen tonight because God is about to speak to you. Galatians 6 verse 9. Please read everybody. One more time. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in what? Hold on. In what? There is a timing in the spirit called due season. For in due season. Not any time. Do not be weary in well-doing. I'm building up from what I shared last week. For in due season. We will reap. But there is a condition. What is the condition? If we, that means, if we faint, what will happen? Although the due season will come, but we will not reap. Hallelujah. So there are two things there. There is a due season and there is a call for endurance. Call for strength. Call for continuity. Hallelujah. 
one of the most disturbing aspects of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom is the concept of timings and seasons there are very few messages in the body of christ that attempt to address the issue of divine timings and the seasons of men's life yet the bible talks a lot about the things that happen under the sun and that anything under the sun is governed by times and seasons say after me times and seasons ecclesiastes chapter 3 gives us an extensive description of the revelation and the power of times and seasons and how that these things hold the key to our manifestation in this earth in this realm and that means if we do not understand spiritual timings if we do not understand seasons we may be equipped with the principles but we will faint because we do not realize that god is working even at those times and seasons so i want to teach on certain things that will bless us tonight the Bible says for us not to be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. He said for in due season we will reap. Last week I began to talk about how that the Bible gives us a mystery that time and chance happen to them. You remember that teaching? Hallelujah. And so that our, our, our part of the equation is not to sit down and keep waiting for the time. The Bible already gives us a guarantee that time and chance will happen to everyone. So rather than sitting down and waiting, well will my turn come? We spend the time doing what? Sharpening our abilities. So that when that time comes, we will be ushered into the realm of greatness, never to come out again. If you believe it, say Amen. Let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build number one write this word down waiting w-a-i-t-i-n-g waiting one word that gets believers scared in the kingdom many people have preached all kinds of messages but tonight i want us to examine this concept i do my best by the leadership of the spirit to make sure that we leave no stone unturned as far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned waiting one of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting it can be so frustrating it can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season please take note of what i'm sharing no matter how anointed you are no matter how great you are if there is a prophecy upon your life hear me between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting and it's important i teach you how it works in the kingdom otherwise when you enter that season you may be so confused and you will abort destiny not knowing what is happening behind the scenes is somebody getting blessed already because many of us right now are in this phase as i speak right now there are individuals who are at these periods of their life and truly they are confused because this season rattles your convictions everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season your ideologies your beliefs your prayer life your dexterity in the spirit your endurance everything you have ever acquired through the world will come on that test and if you cannot stand that test brothers and sisters you may stand from here and see canaan but you may never enter it the fact that you have seen the vision the fact that you have had the dream is no guarantee the fact that God spoke to you is no guarantee that you will arrive there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? You saw yourself a mighty evangelist. You saw yourself a mighty apostle. In your dreams, you see crusades. 
you see a lot of things in your dreams you have seen that you are a financial apostle you've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom i want to announce to you tonight that between the prophecy and its manifestation are stages and principles and one of those stages is called the period of waiting and if you do not understand this brothers and sisters you may never arrive there Proverbs 13 verse 12 Proverbs 13 verse 12 Let's hurry up tonight Open your heart Hallelujah Now the Bible explains to us You see, look up please I've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom But studying about man Because I'm a man and I, I like to know what, what my, the components of my, my, my creation, my build up. I like to know what my strengths are. Not as a, my personality, but the general man. I like to know who man is. What are his limitations? What are his predicaments? What are the vulnerabilities that can befall man? This revelation helps me to know where to lean on God more. Hallelujah. And here and there I have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man. And it will take us understanding those limitations. And leaning on the strength of God to supplement for our inadequacies at that time. Otherwise we will not last. One of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again one to read hope deferred makes what when you postpone hope when expectations are not met the bible says it can affect your spirit man are you reading it here the word heart there's the same word spirit when you hope for certain things by our natural design we love winning we love achieving we love accomplishing things are you getting my point we love seeing a sign of progress in our lives is someone getting what I'm, I'm, I'm saying tonight the Bible says when that hope that we have that drives us into destiny when those expectations that we have are not achieved when it is deferred that means when it is postponed the bible says it has an effect not just in your physical body it does not just create fatigue in your physical body it affects even your spirit man he said but when desire cometh it is a tree of life when you achieve your goals and you hold on to it there is the joy that fulfillment and accomplishment brings in every man hallelujah that means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process you may never arrive there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Although anointed, although born again, the Bible tells us that there is, a, there is an inadequacy that is in man. That man does not have the, the ability to endure, to suffer long forever. That means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out no matter how good and godly you are that means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny say amen now there are two dimensions to waiting and i want us to look at it number one is that waiting so that we don't confuse ourselves here waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. We must get this. It's very important. Waiting 
can be a demonic strategy. Please write it. It can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. I must balance this straight up so that many of us do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever and then get convinced because if the word of God is not rightly divided, the devil can use that it is written and convince many of us now who should be preparing for miracle service next week and say, Lord, an end comes to this. There are certain periods of waiting that are not divine. They are not initiated by God at all. Are you getting my point now? They are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us from entering our prophetic destiny. That kind of waiting is called delay. Write it down. The name given to that kind of waiting is delay. Delay. Satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you. Paul said, once and again, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. Then number two, the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration. Please get this. You must get this. That there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom. All of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom. That there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us. And the name given to it is delay. But that there is a waiting period. There are these seasons that are divine orchestrations. Lamentations 3.25. Can we look at it very quickly? Is someone getting blessed already? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys. You soon go and sit down. Okay, just go, just go, just go. Oh, bless you. So you can be writing. It's very important that you write. Lamentations 3.25 Are we there? Everyone please look up and read before you continue writing. One to read. The Lord is good unto them that do what? Not wait on Him. Wait for Him. Wait for Him. It's a very difficult thing to wait. Very, very difficult. And this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process. Write it in the kingdom. It's called process. Process. So there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you. And you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from God or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness. Hallelujah. Process. Very important. You will come to this period of your life whether you pray for it or not, is part of the things that you will find. And I'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season. Let me give you one example. Remember the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. They came out. There was a prophecy given to Moses. Even Moses, their leader, did not enter the promised land. Look up. Did you know that God never told Moses he was going to die on the way? Is that true? The prophecy that was given to Moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. God never told him somebody will take out the baton. But between Egypt, brothers and sisters, and Canaan, only two people from that generation were able to make it. Only two people. They all had the prophecy. They rejoiced. 
they joined Moses after the, the, the parting of the Red Sea to sing. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider, because it had not stretched their patience too much, but they came to a point. Look at all the things they did in the wilderness, because they did not understand this operation. And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. Thank you, Jesus Christ. A few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still, known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there's no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place. Number two, waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. I'm taking our time to read it because I don't want us to miss it. You'll notice in the last few weeks I've been teaching very carefully, reading almost directly from my notebook here because I don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people, I want them to follow on thoroughly. Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three. Look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because we have expectations for something great about our life, we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it. Are you getting my point? To the future. So that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive. And then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period. Are you getting my point? But the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy and say on that glorious day when I wear my suit you will see the dance I've never danced before. I would dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point, you will see the lady looking frowny, angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night. Oh God, when will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it. Let me just enter this thing. And you see joyless believers. Angry and offended at God. Note this tonight. That waiting should never postpone your joy. You can be joyful while waiting. Never wait until you arrive. 
Your joy gets complete when you arrive. But that joy should start and go with you all the way. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is the strength that you will need. There is a difference between joy and happiness. If I give you one million now, there is every reason to be happy. That's not joy. Hallelujah. But joy is of the Holy Ghost. It's the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of God's integrity. So when there is no physical evidence, you are joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Look up, please. How many of us have killed our joy? There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years looking like 50. Why? Say, I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning, there's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reasons. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes, but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and gassed out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit. To make sure that part of the things that suffer, of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period, your joy should not be one of them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because your joy will culminate to your strength. God is speaking to someone tonight. Waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing. When you wait in the kingdom, when you follow through that period, you are acknowledging that God works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how God makes men great. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Joy. Waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing. Everybody say divine timing. Say after me, there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest. Say one more time, there is a season and a timing there is a season of showing forth there is a season of manifestation there is a season of display yes you must recognize that there is a season brothers and sisters is called due season everyone say due season due 
season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience. Write it down. Impatience. What is impatience? Patience that has been exhausted. Patience that has been exhausted. Tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry. There is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly. I, I think that's one of the greatest keys in my opinion. One of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy Africans, Nigerians and young people in general. Impatience. impatience what does it mean to be impatient impatience means getting ahead of god getting ahead of god that's what it means to be impatient you run ahead of god you run ahead of his timing for your life impatience is a dangerous thing god is speaking to us tonight because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience there are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience hallelujah very very important you are a young lady you're just 21 you want to kill yourself if I don't marry by 2014, let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks, which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him. Just write the scripture. We may not read it for time's sake. I want to hurry up and I want us to finish very fast. In Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's just, let's just look at it very quickly. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. That man, Abraham, God had spoken to him. Now it was taking too long. The result was not coming. And the Bible says in the 16th chapter, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. So this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of God that he would be the father of all nations. And she had a what? Please read. And she had what? And that handmaid was an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. I want to show you the danger of impatience. Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? 
Are you getting my point now? Impatience will create pictures around your life. If by August a godly brother does not come, God is my witness. I will go anywhere. Even if it's my village and carry anybody. The Bible says, Sarah told Abraham, I'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels. And Sarah said, okay, this is a handmaid. She's younger than me. She can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action, get ready because an Ishmael will be born. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Look at verse 11. 11 and 12. Let's see the tragedy of this union. The product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child. Listen. And shall bear a son and shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham, was that the blessing you were told? He said, This union will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means this troubler will be everywhere. Till today, the world has not recovered from the union. Less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience. Jeopardize the generation. Who is about to jeopardize his destiny here? There's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience. Is someone getting blessed tonight? The nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days. Look at me. It was a waiting period. Is that true? They didn't see any progress. Whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God. So something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening. Brothers and sisters, it looks like your life has been stagnant for years. You think you are stagnant, but if God should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit. God is really ministering to someone tonight. It's not the way you have been looking at it. It's not the way you have been looking at it. Physically, you have not been in school for three years. But there is a progression. The Lord has been doing something. The job did not come. Five years after graduation, you are still struggling. And you believe you are like every other jobless person. Is that true? There is an investment of the Spirit in you. Only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom. The nation of Israel could not wait. And what did they tell Aaron? Let's look at that verse Exodus 32. Very quickly. Is someone getting blessed? Impatience can jeopardize your destiny. 
you can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through but never ever be able to cut out of your life hallelujah and they told Aaron they said Moses is wasting our time we don't even know whether he's dead or not please we brought gold out of the temple we remember that while we were slaves we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold and it was the god that brought them out oh yeah Aaron come and build us this idol let's celebrate this idol we can't wait if there is God in heaven why will he keep us in the wilderness for for this long 40 days we didn't see Moses he didn't tell us anything and we are waiting let us build an idol and while God was with Moses advocating for the same people they were destroying their own destiny by themselves and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. They force Aaron. They force Aaron. Which are in the ears of your wives, and of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people took the golden earrings. They were so desperate to come out of that season. They say, Is it not earring? Take. Oh yeah, all the women remove your earrings. Yes, we need to carve out very fast never find yourself trying to help God in a process that is exclusively within his power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness many of us try to help God Uzzah tried to hold the ark he died yet the ark never fell Let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool. After he made it into what? A molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land. So after two years, the child doesn't come. After praying and praying, oh, we trust God. And then somebody comes to say, there's one man who, it's not like I'm suggesting that you should go there. Me, my heart, it's me. Praise God. The man can pray. It's not like a herbalist. It's not exactly, it's not a pastor. It's not a herbalist, but he used to help people. You say, really? Two years ago, when they told you, you say, no, 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 I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed out. And you say, eh, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know, men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you're talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, Let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people. And I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life Series Part 1, 2, 3. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship, you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? guy will say sweetheart you say me i said yes to you guys say you said yes now what is all this again and ladies please be one i don't know why as i'm talking i'm coming into all this relationship thing. maybe god is speaking to some people through it hallelujah ladies don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say answer him now you said it's none of your business if it's not you, they ask advice when you are invited. Otherwise, stay away and pray. 
Many of us just come and say, this guy is my personal person. I know him. I said you will be in the relationship. And many people jeopardize their destinies. Is he born again? He's a nice person. Does he love the word of God? He's okay. He doesn't smoke. He, he used to smoke and drink before God. Abba, the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba, me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects. And you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest. And he says, so what? I'm a man. You said you're a Christian, you will not sleep with me. I can't, you are still my wife, but I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. Impatience brought the world under, under all kinds of terrible things. someone getting blessed let's hurry up during the waiting period certain things usually happen and I want you to take note of them number one is that you have the tendency to get weary especially when you have obeyed every principle you know and there is no obvious change Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that. And they say, sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, 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 the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been walking according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two. Your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in, your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three, impatience sets in. I'm giving, you to it, I'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand. That these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting. The tendencies, the vulnerabilities. Number four, which is the most dangerous part is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which God has given you. Options. Options. Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him, in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me? more than this how many of us have given God options God told you you are going to be a great man of God but he said be patient you were not patient now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you only you and your best friend who is tired he wants to leave it's just that he doesn't know what to do with you only two of you every evening only two of the person is tired because although you are genuinely called but you cannot wait for timings and seasons hallelujah 
I remember one, one pastor gentleman years ago, that guy is still struggling till today. And if he doesn't adjust, he may still be struggling till only God knows when. I remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher. It was such an embarrassment to his personality. And he said God did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable, he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs. He gave you symbols. He gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will. You have not seen them. The equation has not lined up. If God tells you something, 80% is still not God. You must wait until it looks like God. It's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is God. Whereas it is not of God. And so somebody comes and says, Will you like to be a pastor in our church? And they say, Thank you, Jesus. I knew it. You people are underutilizing my anointing. Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience. There, there's no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires. 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a cake, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my cake comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth because you attach yourself to Hagar and Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life, 
Listen, let me tell you, I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when a few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And I would prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, the people would not even say, Oh, there is an honorarium who want to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I'll go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they'll push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget, two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have it. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say it's true. It's true. I'll never forget through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jankfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of see the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You're already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The journey is still far in Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that. <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I will never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted. They would have list of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference. They will invite me and I'll go to pray. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, Go. It looked like I was a fool, but one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming in the name of Jesus in two months. I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people step into seasons that is not God. That, let's, listen, if you force a door to open, whether it's God that opened it or not, it will open. But the trouble is, when they ask you who sent you, you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone. Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long 
Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. You told me a day will come. I will minister before thousands. I will be an international evangelist. You are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry. But as it is, I have not yet seen it. Number one, I'm giving you the formula. Brothers and sisters, if you keep this secret, you will survive the process. Between prophecy and manifestation, you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside, there will be a strength that will carry you. Number one, during your waiting period, you should do the following. Recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season. It comforts you to know that your wait is not forever. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. From verse 1 to 8, Wuntonde tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun. The Bible says, John remained in the wilderness until his what? Season of appearance. Everyone prophesy to yourself, my season of appearance is coming. Prophesy, my season of appearance is coming. Can you turn it into a prayer in one minute? I may not look like it now. But my God, there is a making. And my season of appearance will come. I have a portion among the great. And the hand of God will bring me there. I will stay through. I may not be able to preach now. I may not have money in my pocket now. But there is a due season. It has been written by prophecy. Not the witches in my village can stop it. No power in existence. And I choose to wait. I choose to wait. There is a due season when I will drive the cars. There is a due season when men will run after me with jobs. There is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage. There is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building. Oh yes, time and chance happen to them all. My turn is coming. I know this for sure. A day will come. I will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire. A day will come. That wedding ring will enter my hand too. But meanwhile I wait. A day will come. I will travel abroad as though I'm walking from my house and going outside. I will enter the plane. A day will come. I will wear the convocation gown. A day will come. I will finally pass the charm. There is a due season. The child will come. Barrenness does not last forever. Prophesy in one minute. Shake away unbelief. Shake away impatience. A day will come. I will have peace with my husband. I know it's a demonic challenge. There are ancestral powers causing this family problem. But there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family. I know. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I may not see the wind. I may not see the cloud. It does not look like it will rain. But the hand of Jehovah, that hand that regulates times and seasons, my turn will come. I will be on television. My turn will come. The healing anointing will finally work. My time will come. When my prophecy will appear, it's called my season of appearing. Is called my season of appearing.
Hallelujah. Recognize that everything under the sun works by timing. So when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for, listen. I cannot tell you, God gave me an instruction. And God told me, he said, that he would use koinonia messengers like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations. And God specifically said we should never, not in this season of ministry, begin to sell tapes and do all of that. I cannot tell you how many people have called to say, man of God, you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira. I said I appreciate your interest, but there is a season. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So many people have spoken to me. Come and open Koinonia branch in Abuja. Come and open in Lagos. Come and do this. Come and do that. I told you in 2006, after our crusade in Joss, it was so powerful. The PFN said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry. They were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium. I went to God and God said you would die. That was exactly what I told them. That God said I would die. Listen, many men of God today, do you know why ministry is killing them? Although God called them, they have opened other seasons for themselves. God never spoke to them to start a church. They started a church. Now they are wondering, no money, no nothing, no grace. There are many people, God told them, you are an evangelist. They said, I need a base so that I will have money. As though God cannot finance his work. Are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. For adventure, it was my flesh that minister to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely. They produce five albums. Not even their immediate environment. No. They, they traveled abroad, took the albums, it didn't sell. Because the season. See, I taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that God is with you. Hallelujah. Recognize that there is a due season. Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for three years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. They, it's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. 
calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that He has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room and that one room, it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house, but in the interim, when impatience wants to set in, when weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while, I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while. And I am humble at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah I have spoken to so many HIV patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy I remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said I now have a ministry and it was, she did not even come for the counseling for healing. She had so conquered it that for her to live is Christ and to die is gain. She was focusing on something else. Yet there is somebody shouting and arguing. If the husband does not come in two months, Lord, if I backslide, let it be that it's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who have been diagnosed. Oh, you need to go to the hospital, brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut, they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing His faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point? and she says yes Lord I thank you I'm alive if I can do nothing I can give God praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred. There is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at God. We are tired of eating spaghetti in this house. My father only pays school fees. Shame on him. At his age, he cannot even give me 5,000. My father is giving me 1,000. You wait and see the one 
that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to Zaria. One heavy echo like and prophecy may God be with you. And it came and stopped at North Gate, not having one naira, yet they are in 300 level. When you see people worshiping Koinonia, everyone knows the story. We can wear suits and fake it, but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting. So don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship God. They gave birth to them in a nice maternity ward. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. That I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering what will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die people challenge me i am happy but god has done too much in my life i will be the most ungrateful person in my life if i ever try to trivialize what god has done sister you are always complaining but you forgot you are beautiful there was there about beauty oh may god change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. See, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. It's sin before God. Refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done. Shine on me Your grace Your grace I'm nothing without you It's grace Your grace Shine on me Hallelujah You are there complaining Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, when nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor 
Remember when we used to sit on the floor. Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate. And you are still complaining. How many graduates does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Armed robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years. That God is able. God who sustained my mother without salary. She trained me to school. Where is that God? Where is the God that delivered you? When the doctors concluded about you, when that breast lump grew up, when, 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 that, when your, hair was, your hair was falling, where is that God that helped you? Some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs. Have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God? Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, Nothing will stop me from becoming what he has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never, never become a victim of impatience. Let's hurry up. Number three, what to do while you wait for your due season. Employ the weapon of praise. Hiya. Many people do not know that praise is a weapon. Employ when, when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise. And see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3, let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17. And let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up, the fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines. But at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. 
I will joy in the God of what? The God that will bring that salvation. I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work. Some of you as you go back right now to your homes. The truth is that there is nothing to eat this night. Yet, I will rejoice. I remember times in my life. I've told you. When I would buy bread. And cut the bread. And put granite. Huh? And close it. And give thanks to the God of Israel. Because I knew that what was in me was greater than the restaurant. Greater than whatever. Can you sing the song he's playing now, Sam? What does the song say? Let's even understand the meaning of the song. So that we know we are singing. Igbo people, what does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. For what? Thank you, Daddy. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Kaka. Oh, God of your salvation, thank you. Very quickly, Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell and let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight and that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods, all the gods that want me to be weary. He said, I will praise you before the gods. I will sing praises. That means I will look at all of these options and I will dance before God and say, it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child. The weapon of praise. The weapon of praise. Let me hurry up because I want us to take at least five or ten minutes. Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an armed robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. 
make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come, you will do the real one. For sure. Begin to act like your future. When Joseph, Joseph knew, he had seen it in the spirit, seen it in the dream, that a day will come, he will stand. The sun representing his father, the moon representing his mother, and 11 stars will bow to him. But then, his life was opposite what his destiny was saying. They threw him in the well, and he composed himself. He said, I'm a leader. I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today, $13, you sell a human being. Were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away? But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, sing. You can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat, they can lie against you, they can scandalize you. That's taking your coat, but it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. They cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, it would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, boy, my colleagues have 1 million. Say, nope, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beards were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. 
But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was strict. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walks like royalty. Other slaves were moving his over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is, and it came to pass. Everybody say, and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month, and that, and that, and the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. But you are still keeping bitterness. Right from secondary school. Now you've met with the lady in university and you say, even till we die, you are still holding on to your past. You are prolonging your arrival. Because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified. Hallelujah. Your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future. Your preparation is your report card. You're diligent at this level. Number five. Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through tithing. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison, Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said, no problem. The truth will come out. Because you can see, look at me. You become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics. Are you getting me? You become too cheap. You make yourself too cheap. There are many of us who learn this now. Learn this now. It is easier to become great than to remain great. Look at me. Come, my sister. Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all these ones? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV. 2014. Limited edition. And she comes with it. Do you know at once, all of a sudden, you will find fault with her hair? You will find fault with what she's wearing. Is it this place they put watch or here? You know why? Listen. People's progress, often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness. It is a natural thing. You must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. 
Listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. We are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor or one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. If dropping the money of the institution is all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started palming your hair. You want all the koinonia guys to see you, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. All the bruises inflicted by this is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing, they'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, he seduces problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign problem solving sets you apart it distinguishes it makes your difference to be seen problem solving makes you known you will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you when you do this you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming all the days of my appointed time I will wait Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience. 
that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the, the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. My goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys did not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you still form it. And I learned once again. Brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearing? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best student. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We're going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We're going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We're just going to thank God for the season that He has even brought us. Thank Him for the things. Please, worship team, prepare yourselves. Thank Him for the things that He has done. And thank Him for what He's going to do. I don't know how you are going to worship God and praise God tonight. And then after that, we will pray and prophesy and receive grace from God. This message you are hearing, you will play it again and again in the future when you sit on the throne of greatness and you will cry because you will thank God. Rise up on your feet, everyone.
prayer points right now. I'd like you to start this prayer session with a dangerous prophecy about your destiny. I don't know what the devil has spoken to you. I don't know what options you are about to take. But right now, lift your voice and begin to speak. And say, I'm not giving up. My God is alive. Go ahead. Pray. No way. No giving up. The prophecy is still above my head. There's no giving up. I may fail, but I will rise again. There's no giving up. The hand of God is upon me. I'm an object of praise. Oh, protect it. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. My destiny is before me. There is a generation waiting for me. There's no turning back. I may cry, but there's no turning back. I may weep, but there's no turning back. There is an anointing upon me. There is a prophecy upon my life. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. There is hope for a dream, even though it be cut off at the sense of water. Will fall again. Prophesy. There's hope for my family. There's hope for my marriage. There's hope for my academics. To him that is joined with the living, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Go protect it. Cause the spirit of discouragement. Cause the spirit of impatience. Cause the spirit of discouragement. That business can arise again. That marriage can arise again. Your CGPA can arise again. Although you are in final year, it's not too late. Samson, your eyes may be plucked out, your hair may be cut off, but there is a new season. David, remain in the wilderness. The day of your announcing is coming. Come on, pray. Pray, Koinonia. Make investment for your destiny. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. No compromise. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. The next prayer point is that you're going to cry for grace. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, if because of the fierceness of the season of waiting, you now say I will marry any man. I will take any job. Okay, I will go to the harbor list. I will ask God for forgiveness later on. I will sleep with the boss. Let me just get the work. I like you to shout no way. Shout it no way. Listen. The three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, we are not careful to speak to you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we are going to pray. I like you to say, Oh God, tonight, give me the finisher's anointing. Give me the finisher's anointing. One more time I will push. Come on, open your mouth and pray. The finisher's anointing. 
the anointing. The finisher's anointing. Koinonia, pray. You are almost there. Don't give up. When your season is about unveiling, don't give up. You paid the price for 10 years, for 5 years. You paid the price. You paid the price. Lord, give me the finisher's anointing. I will finish. I receive the finish of the Lord. They may criticize me, but I won't give up. Oh, God, 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 I'm a part of faith. I receive the finish of the Lord. They may call me Mother Teresa, but I will keep walking in holiness. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Till my chest comes. Time and chance happens to them. Wait. Wait. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall come forth with wings. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the God of your salvation. Though thy beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Though thy beginning be small, Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord, when they are strength, when they are almost casting out, suddenly, when the devil is celebrating the finishing of the oil, a prophetic word brings it back again. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I like us to prophesy and say, Lord, I will become what you have shown me. Nothing will stop me. I'm on my way coming. Prophesy. Go potokata. I will become that prophet that you have told me. I will become that great man. I prophesy. I send a prophecy to my destiny. Enough, you will enter your realm of greatness. Koinonia, you will only rise from glory to glory, from place to place, from prosperity to prosperity. One level of the anointing of Prophesy. I call my family blessed. I call my loved ones blessed. I call my destiny blessed. The hand of the Uber that has started this war. The hand of the Uber that started this ministry. The hand of the Uber will complete it at the shout of praise. The shout of praise. The shout of praise. It is not by power. It is not by might. There is an ability of the spirit. There is an ability of the spirit. Going to do before now and the end of the year. Wait, madam. Let me tell you first. Number one, 
there will be radical financial shift in your family. I've not even touched financial issues. Number two, number two, this is what is going to happen. What do you do? What do you do, yo? I'm a teacher. You are a teacher. I see a lot of favor. I see you. This woman is a very good woman. Very good. She say amen. A very good woman. You can know you are good. Some of you are bad. She knows she's good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have a daughter. You have a daughter. What's her name? Joy. Joy. The Lord says, I should tell you, it's time for her to leave her name in the family. I don't know her name. That's why God said I should, I should ask you of her name. Joy, madam, you will come back and you will testify. It's a mighty visitation. Lord, confirm your word with signs. Did I pray for you? You're a businessman. You do not even know, but you're a major businessman. Come. You have not started anything. You don't know anything. Go and read. Let me tell you, my brother. What do you do? You are, a civil servant. you are going to do business in a mighty way. And God is going to prosper you in a very mighty way. Are you following me? We have not touched the area of finance. will come. Because there are many families here. This is an issue. We will address that. But for now, let me just pray for you for what you came for. Let mama go free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did I pray for you? Deliverance comes now. Deliverance comes now. You will let her go. Your body is afflicted. Deliverance comes now. Shake it up, cut up, up. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, deliverance comes now. Come. Look at me. Button the other shirt. You need to be serious with God. Huh? You are young, but you are not serious with God. But God loves you. Huh? When it's time for altar call, just run and come and stand. Okay? God loves you and he wants to use you. Wow. Sister, that fair lady, please run and come quickly. The yoke of delay is ending in your family. See, look at me. You don't know why I'm saying you should run. Don't do woman, woman. I'm saying run. These are instructions. You understand? Please go back and run out. Don't be embarrassed. God spoke to me. I'm not doing foolish things. Come. Don't worry, I'll hold you so that you don't Hold my hands. Hold my hands with both of your hands. I saw a measuring tape. And the Lord says, it is the time for favor. Are you following me? Lord, confirm your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your family will come with rejoicing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please bring out your prayer request. Start passing it out while we address. Now, if you are sick in your body, please hear me. Any kind of sickness, it's time for you to come out right now. Come out and line up here for healing. Any kind of sickness, please come and line up here for healing. While they do that, ushers, everybody pass your prayer request to the last person by the side outside please please don't miss it god answers prayers here look at how many people are coming for sickness you see how the devil is a is a is a is a liar welfare can i get a cup of water please so i can drink You will be healed. I give you an assurance. One last plague and Pharaoh will let you go this night. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter how much the space is. Listen. Something's changing. Something. See his glory. Something's moving. Something's changing. See his glory. Come on, celebrate for one minute. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Refuse to walk back to your seat. Refuse to walk back to your seat with that sickness. As I look at you, the Lord is revealing people's cases. I see ladies' infections. I see tumor lump in the breast. God is touching this lady right now that is putting her hand on her face. Take it now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing HIV. I see a number of HIV here. Hepatitis. There are men here that have all some challenges. Low sperm counts, infertility, whatever kind of nonsense. Some of you have a woman here. I'm seeing palpitations. Sometimes you gasp for breath. Who is that person? You, madam, God is visiting you. You are not the only person. Please make sure you write a request. This is not a ritual. Hezekiah took the prayer request and took it to the temple and dropped it before God. Hallelujah. Now, all you need, please, except if the, the ministers ask you what the situation is. Otherwise, just a touch I tell you the truth just a touch the worship team sang it just a touch for some of you to be like magic one moment is there another moment is gone I'm seeing somebody that coughs and you cough out sputum sometimes like blood your throat is dry sometimes you cough out blood SS I'm seeing a number of SS People who need genotype change I'm sure you've been hearing the testimonies you don't have to remain where you are hallelujah Jesus you are the great healer as we pray for you go back to your seat so that those who are outside can come it's called a miracle service Lord Jesus you revealed mighty miracles to me in the visions that you showed let there be a mighty confirmation in the name of jesus pastor jakes pastor williams now we are going to pray please let's spread ourselves someone take here someone take there jakes you can start there pastor williams here as we lay hands on you check do what you couldn't do return back if you need test sorry we don't have a medical team yet to do instant tests for people but then I want you to know you will return rejoicing. You will return rejoicing. Worship team, are you ready? You give us that song. Something's changing. Where is Sam? God is visiting men. In the name of Jesus. Heal. Take it. Heal. Take it. Heal. Take it. As I pray for you. Heal. Take it now. Out of the Holy Ghost, kill whatever it is, kill now. Lumps in the breast, go, go, go. Lumps, go. Shakate kalabata kata, rekete kata. Go back and check yourself. Miracles are happening. Heal, Mama, heal in the name of Jesus. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Infections are getting healed. It doesn't matter who touches.
what you see. Ushers, direct them, please. Ushers, direct them. Lay hands on you. Return testimonies. Shake up the other one. 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 Be healed right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go. Be healed right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Shake up the other one. Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Take it now. Now. Miracles are happening. Mighty miracles are happening. What's wrong? Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Please, if if the miracle is for a child, before they get there, leave the child so that they don't jump the child. Please. Hallelujah. Continue. Praise. Heal right now. Take it. Heal. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Go back and check yourself. Take it now. Heal. Filled by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please, when they pray for you, go back to your seats. Shaba ba 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 ba. Shake it, break it, and abort. I bring you healing now, now, now. Please move forward, move forward, move forward. Don't worry, we'll lay hands on everybody, everybody. Mommy, the Lord visits you right now. Leave her right now. Thou foul devil. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. I bring you healing now. Daddy be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every sign of high blood pressure. Go. Something's moving. Something's changing. Be healed now. Please quickly, let's save time. Just a touch, just a touch. Somebody's picture. You can leave the picture. I'll lay hands on it. I'll lay hands on the picture. Fire! Fire! Thou devil of darkness, it's time to go right now. Shekete ne kotoba. Out! Out of her! Out! Out of her! Now! Fire upon you! Fire upon you! Fire upon you! Right now! As I lay hands on you, you'll be healed! At once! At once! Something's moving! Something's changing! If you have a CD or something for job, lift it please! So that we lay hands on it. Something Lift it up. Let me pray. Something's changing. See the glory. It doesn't matter who lay like hands on you. It doesn't matter. Out. 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 Now. Come out of her. Out of her. Shake it up. I to go super. Come out. Out of her right now. Fire upon you. Every part of your body. Fire right now. Fire. Come out of her. Come out of her. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Please, this side you can go, Pastor Jackson. Be healed right now. Be healed 
right now. Be healed right now. Healed right now. Be healed right now.
remember I spoke and I said the lady who ran out with the mental disorder, this is how she has returned. The Bible says he's confirmed the words of his messengers. Because the Lord brought her here. Before you shout that Nago day again, we're going to cast that devil of darkness. Look at me. This night, one last plague and Pharaoh will let you go. Hold my hands. Hold my hands with the other hand. Look at me. Say, I am not mad. Say it, I am not mad. In the name of Jesus. Satan, you heard her. We overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Right now, that devil of madness. Go! No more madness. Sanity. Restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead.
Jesus, I belong to Jesus. Never going back, never going back. I belong to Jesus. Never going back, never going back, never going back. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Never going back, never going back. Shout of praise. Hallelujah. I tell you, I cannot begin to tell you the things that God is showing me in the spirit. And I will send one last plague upon Pharaoh and upon the nation of Egypt. After that, he shall let you go. We are going to pray for the request now. And then I will speak over your life. Already mighty things are happening. Some of you will go back home and find testimonies waiting for you there. Hallelujah. Please everybody stand up. Pastor Williams, Pastor Jakes. Okay, he's still praying for them. Ah, okay. Please quickly. If you are yet to submit your prayer request, do that quickly. God answers prayers in this place. Pastor, sir. Listen, please. While you are standing, I'd like you to stretch your hands towards the request and begin to say, Lord, you know what I wrote there. You know what I wrote there. Some of you wrote things that are impossible. But you're saying, Lord, you know what I wrote. It's time for you to change my story. The answered prayer will be the proof. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Come on, pray. Lord, change stories. Thousands of requests all over the country, all around the world. My God, change stories. Make sure you are praying. Lord, we lay hands. 
Santa Procoto Soto Labaca Prega de Balaraba. Lord, change stories. Change stories. My God, let the angel of the Lord pass. Pass. Let the angel of the Lord one more break. Let these testimonies come to order. Let this request from testimony. Request become testimonies. Become testimonies. Come on, say. Take go, 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 Mighty things are happening in this place. Mighty things. Requests are becoming testimonies. God is visiting people. I can feel the fire on me. I know my own request and I know God is answering it. I can feel the fire on me. Hallelujah. I want to pray right now. Ezekiah went to the temple and lifted up the threat letter to God. And when he did, God came through for them. And he said in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, he said, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lord God of Israel Now arise Oh Lord Would you come To your resting place And the ark Of your might And let us rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness, we celebrate your honor. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray right now. There are thousands of people Miracles will be happening as I'm praying. Some of you is happening to your members at home. Father, miracles will break out right now. At the count of three, I just felt the anointing on me. One, two, prayer requests are being answered. 
supernaturally Sheketele Mokotoba job 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 a job is coming I see it marriage is coming I see it admission admission jam jam request Wayek someone wants to get married before December I see it financial breakthrough cancer for your mother cancer for your mother salvation of your family members mighty salvation some of them are in the beer parlor the angel of the Lord is going after them Father, you have made this place an altar of praise where you turn every weeping into mourning. This is no pretense, oh God. I speak right now. Let every prayer request here and for those streaming online I change it to be testimonies now in the name of Jesus I speak to you I speak to you prayer request and that which is dead will hear the voice of God become testimonies and be delivered for God's people in the name of Jesus hallelujah Give God thanks, it is done. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I always consider this part to be the greatest part of the miracle service. He sent forth his word. I'm about to prophesy right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like a mantle coming on my head. Please, everybody stand. Please, everybody stand. Believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe ye his prophets and you shall prosper please lift your hands everybody please as i speak i want you to believe it i want you to receive it while i pray the lord told me if it does not happen, it's because you did not speak it. Things will change right now. As I speak, the angels of the Lord will begin to move to the areas that I'm speaking. All I need you to do is to shout a believing amen when you need to. Hallelujah. Every terminal disease represented in the life of anybody here or any family by the fire of the Holy Ghost right now it leaves your life and your family forever receive it infirmities are going infirmities are going 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 cancer go cancer go hiv die 
HIV die. SS change to AA. SS change to AA. AS change to AA. Every blood disease, go, go, go. Every blood disease, go now. Go now. Migraine headache, go now. Go now. Fibroid, go now. Go now. Peptic ulcer, be gone right now. Be gone right now. HIV, one and two, in any body or family, I command you, die now. Every infection in ladies and guys right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be healed now. Every eye problem be gone now. Deafness in the ears go now. Any of your family members who is bedridden, whether for stroke, I'm seeing stroke and partial paralysis right now in the name of Jesus. I command them to arise from that bed. Every plague of death over any family. He said, and when I see the blood, I will pass. I pray any devil that has said you will not see 2014 and has said your family members will not see it, I curse that devil in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Any kind of delay in this place, marital delay, or any kind of delay at the count of three yokes and causes of delay be gone one two three go 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. Any altar of darkness. Hear me. I don't care where it's coming from. That is speaking against your life or the well-being of your family. Right now. That altar, wherever it is, it will catch fire now. Catch fire now. It will catch fire now. Shake it, it, it. Catch fire. Catch fire now. Every altar. Shake it, it. Every altar. Catch fire. Catch fire now. Every altar against any family. Catch fire now. hallelujah listen whoever has been marked for disfavor that they say things cannot work for you or your family members I remove that embargo of disfavor now 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 Hallelujah. Hear me. Whatever the devil has stolen from your family, whatever the devil has stolen in your life, I stand as a servant of God. This one is going to hit many people. There are many families that need restoration. 
I will shout restore at the count of three. We are hurrying up. We are out of time. Father, let the wind and the angel of restoration move across this place. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. I command restoration. I command restoration. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Restore. Restore. Hallelujah. Every yoke of academic failure, whether wayek, whether jam, some of you have not been able to enter the institution right now. I see fire. There are many of you, it's an embargo of darkness. You will feel like something jumping out of your head right now. I command yokes of academic failure. Be lifted now. Be lifted now. Be lifted now. Shake it, take it over. Be lifted now. Be lifted now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear me. Some of you have struggled, hear me. Some of you are Christians, but you have struggled with habits, masturbation, pornography. It's not like you are bad. You have been trying and trying to stop. It's eating your life. Whether for you or for your loved ones, right now, I pray. That embargo of darkness. Sin shall not have dominion. And I pray, whatever spirit that sponsors that kind of life leaves you now 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 anyone here looking for a job or your family members they've tried they've applied everywhere my Bible says promotion comes neither from the east nor the south nor the west. I pray right now let an anointing that will cause your destiny help us and that of your family members to locate you. May that anointing hit you now. Take it! Take it! I command miracle jobs Miracle jobs, miracle jobs in the name of Jesus. Those of us who are in business or your family members are in business, I pray right now in the name that is above all names. The Bible says it shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever you do, it prospers. I pray right now. I command every business here. Grow in the name of Jesus. Grow in the name of Jesus. Expand in the name of Jesus. Increase in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Whatever trouble is in your family, some of you, your family is at the brink of divorce. Some of you, your father is not taking care of you. I don't care. Family problems, God is visiting them now. Every family problem, because God marked this miracle service for families. Every problem, Satan is hiding behind the corner and joining the heads of people. At the count of three, be released. One, two, three. Families be free. Families be released. I command peace. I command prosperity. I command love. Every foul spirit responsible for the situation in families. 
be lifted now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray those who have been destined to help you and take you to the next level of your life right now, wherever they are, destiny help us. I call you into the life of God's people. Wine pressers and bakers, show forth, come forth. And he went to the tomb of Lazarus, and Lazarus was dead four days. And he called him forth right now. Whatever is dead in your life and your family, I stand under this unction of God and I pray whatever is dead I command it right now let that which is dead hear the voice of the Lord come forth now come forth now whatever is dead come forth now hallelujah I release breakthrough into your life receive it all kinds of breakthroughs all kinds of breakthroughs you are well favored I pray for your spiritual life some of you your spiritual lives are zero no word life no prayer life tonight let a fire that not even you can quench fire prayer fire word fire take it take it receive it in the name of jesus a hunger for the things of the spirit take it take it take it a hunger to study the word grace to be obedient receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah hear me the bible says because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness and the bible says that oil puts you above your fellows i pray for you wherever you go from today let there be an anointing you cannot explain that will distinguish you let it distinguish you out of the crowd let it distinguish you receive it in the name of jesus any member of your family that is not born again i pray by the permission of the spirit of god let the angels of god look for them and bring them into the faith now no matter how hardened they are we call them born again now we establish it hallelujah you will never be the same never be the same never ever be the same you will come back with testimonies that will make you afraid hallelujah now listen to me inside and outside please remain standing everybody many of you have come you have heard the word of the Lord you have seen the wonders that God has done in our midst and I want to give you an opportunity right now to make a decision for Jesus Christ the Bible says they that be wise shall be like the firmament of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness as the brightness of the stars even forevermore I want to pray for you right now you have struggled Jesus Christ can give you rest both in this life and in the age to come some of you are outside scattered around hearing me from wherever even outside this building it's time to come to Jesus some of you have given your heart to the Lord but you just found out that you have derailed many cares have taken his place and right now you are tired and you are saying Lord let this be the beginning of a new time I want you to leave your seat I'll just count four leave your seat and run out here inside and outside God is speaking to you one 
Appreciate them coming here. They are coming. No power can stop them. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Young and old, too. Please run out. Leave your seat and come. Keep clapping. What a harvest tonight. There are lots of people outside. God is speaking to you. Three. No matter what you have done, God can give you a new beginning. No matter what you have done, stop struggling. There are still people sitting. Keep coming, keep coming. Koinonia, keep appreciating them. Hallelujah. Now, those remaining, join us quickly. Make sure you join us quickly. Join us quickly. Don't let any devil stop you. Join us quickly. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For God so loved you that he gave his one and only begotten son, that if you will believe in him, you will not perish, but you will have him everlasting life. I salute you for this great decision. Everyone who is truly born again made this decision. Now I want you to lift both hands to the heavens and make this genuine decision. Don't be emotional about it. This is not a Bible recitation. This is a genuine decision that will begin your Christian experience. Never forget this day for the rest of your life. I'd like you to shout it very loud. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner unable to help myself but this night I have heard your voice and I come to you save me help me I repent of my sins I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from today I'm a new creation in Christ I'm born again the Spirit of God is at work in me. My sins are forgiven. I am a brand new man. Satan, I denounce you and all your works. From today, I am a child of God. Forward ever, backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. Father, preserve these ones. In the name of Jesus Christ preserve them by the power of your Holy Spirit let their salvation be genuine preserve them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I break the power of sin over your life I break you free from every weight and the sin that doth easily beset you in the name of Jesus you are free I declare you saved by the Word of God begin a new Christian experience in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now congratulations i salute you we welcome you to the biggest family the biggest biggest family it's called the kingdom of heaven hallelujah now i'd like you to follow that lady who is lifting her hands the ushers will direct you who we'll have your informations and you'll be back hallelujah please go this way just follow the ushers appreciate them hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly if this is your first time inside and outside if this is your first time worshiping with us please leave your seat and come out here quickly i want to pray and prophesy over your life please no matter how far you are inside or outside leave your seat and come you must go with this final prophecy all first timers have a prophetic word that we release upon you thank you for coming those who invited them May good things keep locating your life forever. In the name of Jesus. Keep clapping, Koinonia. They are coming. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Mommy, thank you. My mommy is here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please join us quickly if you are coming from outside. Join us quickly. This is the koinonia you've heard about. Hallelujah. God is doing mighty things in our midst. We're here every Friday. 
This was a special venue. Our regular venue is CGC. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Your life will never be the same. Never, never be the same. God will do more than you have bargained for. In the name of Jesus. We want to pray and prophesy upon your life. And I pray that the hand of God will come mightily upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we prophesy. I speak over your life. You are blessed. You are blessed. We bless you with hunger for the things of the kingdom. We bless you with grace. We bless you. We bless you. Let everything work for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Return with testimonies. You will not need to tell men you came for koinonia. An anointing will go with you. What used to be a challenge for you, you will go back and find out that it's a mountain that has been crushed already. The Lord will go before you and grant you rest. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. We love you from the depths of our hearts. Keep growing in the word of God. Hallelujah. I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just this way they will direct you. They will have your details and welcome you. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash koinonia underscore ENI You can also download our messages on www.foreshared.com Eternity Network International Duplicating the fullness of God's life on earth Destiny, this night it must bow. Shut up, Oh. It shall come to pass in that day. There is a rope tied around this lady's neck. There is a rope. Let that rope be set on fire now. 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 Hallelujah. We have to hurry up. There's a lot for us to do. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on her head. Out of her now. That foul devil of darkness. Go, go. On your mark said, go. Out. I see you in the spirit. Come out right now. Come out right now. Lay your hands on her ears. I'm seeing a snake. This is what I'm seeing, a snake. Out! Out of her, that devil of darkness. Now! Now! Now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out! Come out right now. Out! 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 Come out! Come out right now. Out of her. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out! Let her go. Out of her now. An army rising up. Fire upon you now. Fire upon you. Go, 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 go. Out. Out of her 
out now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out now. There's no hiding. Out, out, out now. Out by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me a very big fish like a whale. This is what I'm seeing. To break every chain. Break every chain. Now at the count of three, you are leaving this lady. Never to return. You know my voice. One. Two. Three. Go. Go right now. Out of her. Out of her now. Lay your hands on her back. Out now. Now you're going by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Madam. Please come. Can I talk to you? Yes. Where is your husband? Long time. Do you, do you know why I asked you? The spirit of death is over your family. We must rebuke this. Who brought this woman? She's your mother. Eh? She's your mom. Let's start with you. Because you are not fine as you are. Look, wait now. Just let go. It's you I'm talking to. Forget about who you brought. Mama, things are tied down. Things are not working for you. You do business. What do you do? What does she? Civil servant. Civil servant. What am I seeing with business? I'm a um, secretary assistant. Uh -uh. I'm seeing. I'm not seeing. I'm seeing something that has to do with business. I'm just. My brother does business. Okay, it's your brother that does business. Because I'm seeing everything tied down. We are going to break that yoke now. Huh? You, if we don't pray for you, you will have marriage problems. Out! Out! Now! Now! By the fire of the Holy Ghost! Come out of her! Come out of her right now! Out! 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 By the fire of the Holy Ghost! She's going to cough out something now. Take her outside. You believe that I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands, my dear. Thank you, Jesus. Let the yoke of bondage leave this family right now. I break that yoke. It's of darkness. There is no standing. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. Set you free. Mama, hold my hand. Weep not. Let him go now. Your reign over his life is over. And over his, the people in his family. You have stayed too long. Now. Go. Go. Let him go right now. You are living. In the mighty name of Jesus. This boy has suffered. This boy you are seeing. They have already finished this boy and his entire family. Look at him crying. But the Lord brings him hope to that. Hold my hands, Mama. Let me pray for you. Jesus, visit her. I take away this curse. This curse. Let the curse be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Come. 
Please come. Look at me, look at me. Who brought her? What's wrong with her? Yes, because I'm seeing this is a chain on her neck. This is what I'm seeing. Eh? She has a mental disorder. Oh, she's mad. Wait now, calm down. Hold my hands. Since when? More than what? It will end this night. In the name of Jesus. Hold my hands. Now, devil, I challenge you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let this girl go now. 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 Mental spirit. Out of her right now. The Lord is revealing something to me. It goes right now. Take her back to her seat and keep checking her. I'm seeing a woman. They diagnose you of fibroid. Please let's hurry up. You came here. It's part of your prayer, your list. Not a young lady, a woman. We need to end it right now. We need to end it right now. A dark woman, you are putting her tie. Her tie. Her tie. Her tie. Her tie. Come. It would disappear now in this place right now. You believe that? Please put one hand on your stomach and hold. Thank you, Jesus. Fibroid, it's time to leave. Go right now. Leave this body right now and let her return with testimonies. Out of her! Now! You are a spirit of darkness. Your time has come. You are going out of this body right now. In the name of Jesus, I command the fiber to give way. name of Jesus you are leaving her now you are leaving her now your reign is over shake it the fire of the Holy Ghost is against you lay your hands on her out now you're going the mighty name of Jesus Christ I see you in the spirit there is no hiding place the light of God exposes you and you are living now in the name of Jesus just keep your hands on her how can a young man like this be so oppressed please lay your hands on him let me pray for him now let him go now the fire of the Holy Ghost is against you shekata there's no hiding. There's no hiding. Go. 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 See, many of you, let me explain to you what is happening. It is not about the people. Some of them is the families that they represent. This is the whole family being set free. It's not even about the person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a fracture. I'm seeing a fracture. Fracture. Somebody with a, is a fracture. Something about legs. What happened to you? I had an accident. 
You had an accident. How long? It's July. It's July. And from then, you've not been able to walk. They operated you. Yes. But it didn't, didn't heal. This is demonic. Huh? It's the accident that would have killed you. This thing would have healed. They told you after a while, everything will be, is supposed to be healed now. What's that? Your femur. Your femur. Okay. This one down. Okay. I'm going to pray for you. Did they, did they try to work on it for you? And it has, you cannot walk without this thing. Completely. Do you believe the Lord Jesus will heal you? With all your heart. This is why you came, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Lift it up. Lift it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. I bring you the life of the kingdom that I represent. Bones be joined to bones. Right now. Your recovery starts now. You're feeling the power of the Holy Ghost. Go through your body. Hold him. The Lord is doing a mighty work. See, he's feeling the fire of God. You're feeling the fire of God. Your recovery starts from today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Over the next few weeks, weeks literally, it will be, but as a sign, you'll be able to walk right now without this. Just leave him. Please clear this pathway. Brother, look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, look at me. Lift your leg. Start lifting your leg. Go ahead. Okay, try moving it. Any relief? Are you feeling? Yes, relief. Really. Walk by yourself. Walk by yourself. Come. Look at this. Look at this. Turn around. Turn around and come. That devil is a liar. Your miracle has started. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? Look at this. Come on. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. Look at, look at, look at, look at. See the miracle that is happening to his leg. Look at this, look at this, look at this. He could not do this. Look at, look at. He's lifting the legs. Are you seeing? Watch a miracle happen. Watch a miracle happen. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Look at, look at this, look at this. As fast as you can. Could you do this before? The fracture is joining back. Joining back. Turn around. As it has begun, it will be perfected. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. Move back to your seat. Hallelujah. A mighty miracle has happened here. Someone, your hand is bent. It's bent. Check it now. Check it. You could not bend it. Please, God just showed me. It will surprise you. Run out right now. It's a big miracle. Somebody's hand. You could not bend it very well. The Lord is straightening it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. The Lord is straightening it right now. Look at this. What couldn't you do? You could not lift it before. You could not lift it. He couldn't lift it because he was born deformed. Look at what God is doing. Now put it down, lift it up. Put it down, lift it up. Look, see, see the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at the power of the Holy You know this is dead. Look at what is happening to him. Look at this. Can you see his hands shaking? Look at this. Look at what God is doing. Look at what the Holy Ghost is doing. Okay, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Come. Look at me. Now in the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift it up and bring it down. Look at this. Bring it down. 
Lift it up again. Look at this. Give Jesus a big, big, big clap of praise. God bless you. What's wrong with her? Please, if I don't announce the case, don't bring them. What's who is who brought her? Fracture. Where? Since how long? And you could not walk. You can't walk now. You can't walk. Okay. I'm going to pray for you. Just put just put it down. Put it down. We are going to pray that over the next few weeks it will begin to bend back into shape. You believe that? What could you not do before with it? What can she not do? Father, within the shortest possible time, let this leg bend back to order. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. It's time to wave bye-bye to it. Lift up your hands. Peptic ulcer. We are going to start ministering now. Instant miracles will begin to happen. Pastor Jax is here. We will verify them and have some. Ah. Daddy. Can I talk to you, sir? I'm seeing stroke. This is what the Lord is showing me. The devil wants to bring stroke from here. I'm seeing it completely paralyzed. This is what the Lord is showing me that the devil wants to bring. You believe me? Can I pray for you? Please hold my hands. That devil of stroke. Let him go right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That stroke will not come. We command that you are free. Name of Jesus Christ. Come. God is visiting your family. Not just you, your family. Hold my hands. Both of them. Look at me. Can you shout? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Go ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer, lift your hands. Please, listen. We are going to start praying right now. Instant miracles will start happening. Hallelujah. Where are your family members? Please come. Mama. Where is your first son? the picture I, I'm seeing where is he what is he doing nothing is moving in this family we must break the hands of that huh? who has a child in your family my third he fell in a child, I'm seeing a child. Uh, third, but my immediate elder sister. We are going to pray because okay, this is the child. You see, give God praise. See the baby. This is the baby. <laughs> Madam. Having, my second born is having mental. He's having a mental. Outside where? The person has run away. Eh? Just leave them. She's outside. Where is outside? You don't know where she is. I call her back to this auditorium right now. Wherever she is, I declare right now, whatever spirit has taken her out of this place, she returns now in the name of Jesus. Wherever she is, she returns now back to this place. I'm going to pray for you, ma. 
things will change in a dramatic way in your family. You believe that? Visit mama. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you a visitation from God together with all the members of your family. I lay my hands. Every terminal disease in your family goes right now. Who is this? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands. The power of God will come upon you. Captivity ends. Now! Out! Let this lady go free now. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now in the name of Jesus. I curse that devil of infirmity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be free. Be free right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands please. Now I'm going to pray for you. Pastor Jake sir. Um, where, where do we do it now? Okay, maybe we'll create. Once we begin to minister, as the Lord touches you, check yourself. We want to take some testimonies. Okay, this side. This side. Pastor Jakes will be there. Pastor Williams too is there. Please, we we'll only announce verified miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now lift your hands. All, sir, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. The fire of God is coming upon you, Dora. Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take it now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Shake it Hallelujah. Please. Any miracle right now. Pastor Williams and Pastor Jakes are there to verify it. I command also, some of you will feel like fire. Just shoot from your chest. That's the end of it. Also, be healed now. This lady has also. God is healing her. This lady has also. Follow me, instrumentalist. Hallelujah. At the count of three, also be healed. One, two, three. Be healed right now. 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 Every trace of ulcer. Sheketetetetetetete. Seketetete. Makaprekete lekota saba. Now check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. You have a miracle. Just move straight. We'll take some testimonies now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. The Lord is showing me someone. You're from a polygamous home. Please listen. A polygamous home. Things have been going really bad in your home. In fact, two of your mothers, as in there is a serious fight going on. It's a polygamous home. God wants there is a lot of witchcraft activities going. Who is that person? Come. Look at me. Just look at me. Look at my eyes. Just look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I command you to look at me now. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the spirit. You don't know what I'm seeing in the spirit. At the count of three, that plague of hatred is going. All of you hold your hands together. As soon as I count three, button her shirt. A female usher. As soon as I count three, the fire of God will come upon some of you. This family thing will end right now. Are you hearing me? Lift your hands, all of you. I tell you to be a mighty fire. Just at the count of three. One. Two, three, shake it, take 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 it, 
I set you free right now from altars of darkness. Be free right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They call a woman Mama Embu. Mama Embu. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit ministering to me. It's somebody's relative. Mama Embu. Who is Mama Embu? You? Mama Embu, come. Do you? Where are the Embu? Your name is Mama Embu. How can God give a name in a place, Mama Embu? These are the Embu. Give Jesus praise. Look at. Please, somebody, can you collect the children? These children are sick. I see a plague of darkness upon their lives. He's crying. Sorry, oh boy. Are you seeing all these swellings on this child? This child, what you think is a skin infection, but this is a demonic thing. Huh? We must deal with it. Father, you reveal this. Do you know this is a worm? Do you know this is a worm? This, these are worms around the body of the child. That's what they will tell you is this and that and that. But we are going to pray for the child now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bring life and perfection to this baby. Life in the name of Jesus Christ. Life. Boy, we bring life to you in the name of Jesus. Madam, hold my hands. Look at me. The struggle is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. The struggle is over. Right now. Let it rain. Let it rain. Ah, hold my hands. Let her go. 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 Out. Leave the family. One more plague and Pharaoh will let you go. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go. You will be a woman of prayer from today. Praying in tongues for hours. Mama, I will pray for you. God will turn around any captivity. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Leave her. Right now. Come out of her. name of Jesus Christ. Look, many things are happening here. Don't wait on, okay, there are a few testimonies. Hallelujah. This lady came in here with Pepsi Oxa. Yes, when I came in today, whenever I'm feeling stomach ache, it's like there are pins between my intestines. But today, when he mentioned peptic ulcer, I was healed. Because when I came in, I was actually holding my tummy together like this. Anyone has to close to me outside, close to the gate, would have noticed it if you checked clearly. But now... So the pains are gone. Yeah. Completely gone. If you press it, no pains. Please come. Please come. And sure, press. Press her stomach very well. Any pain? No. Please put your hands together for the Lord. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Give Jesus a big, big clap of praise. Okay. Wow. I hear that there's a hot testimony coming here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to pray. Okay. See, when you see me flow the way I do, I move only as God directs. Are you following me now? If you move by yourself, 
you do something and you won't get any result. Now, the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is going to address the issues of marriage right now. Please stand up. Please rise up. There is an amazing miracle here. Give God praise. Pastor Jakes is coming. Somebody, a mighty, mighty deliverance here. I tell you, the devil is in trouble over your destiny this night. Please shout a big hallelujah. My God. Wow, a lot of you will not understand what happened to this lady. She said one of the nights she had a dream, a man was pressing her and forcing her to eat. Are you following? Was pressing her, forcing her to eat. And since when apostle began to minister and began to speak over her life and command deliverance, she began to cough out things like rope. Are you following? She was feeling rope all over her voice. And right now, what's happening to you? I'm relieved. I'm really relieved. <coughs> Are you just looking like that? <coughs> Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. I don't care what it is. It will go. I don't care what it is. Hear me. It will go this night. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. Not for a man of God to be a superstar. There's no time for that. He said to destroy the works. To destroy the works. Hallelujah. Marriage is a blessing. Can you hear me inside and outside? What did I say? Marriage is a blessing. The Bible says, Therefore, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. But the devil has orchestrated it such that there are yokes of marital delays over families. But right now, I said right now, he said one more plague and Pharaoh will let you go. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to count three. Every spirit that is responsible. Some of you have people come in the night to molest you in your sleep, to sleep with you. At the count of three, I like you to shout, I am free. There will be mighty marital deliverances according to the word of the Lord. It will hit many of you, especially ladies. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Shaka tatate. Shaka tatate. Be free. Be free. Be free. Marital delay. I cost you that spirit responsible for marital delay i open up your marital destiny now in the name of jesus i open up your marital destiny by the fire of the holy ghost i release you shake fire is burning in this place shake it mekoto soto tete makepekete Yokes of marital delay. Yokes of marital delay is over. Over. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every one person who is supposed to be married happily with dignity and your life partner has not come up men keep coming some of you is married men some of you you just get all kinds of irresponsible men they will just come as if they are thieves into your life to steal and kill and destroy there are some of us you are brothers you are responsible people right now i pray every close marital door standing for your family standing for your children every close marital door Right now, be open in the name of Jesus. 
Be open in the name of Jesus. Shake it, 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 it. Be open in the name of Jesus. Shake it, 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 it. Be open in the name of Jesus. Fire, fire is falling. Fire is forcing doors to open up. Fire is forcing doors. Shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake break it, make God to break it, shake it, my brothers go say, rakata kete bele koto, e break it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, man break it, shake it, shake it, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I'm seeing two women. Your major prayer point was fruit of the womb. Please come out here. Fruit of the womb. Celebrate them as they come. The Lord who located you. The Lord who located you. I want you to come rejoicing. Nine months you will come back with your child. Hallelujah. Come, Selina. There was a story. Let me share this to encourage you. Hallelujah. Praise God. A woman was barren for how many years? Eight years. Eight years. She was barren for eight years. She didn't even come. It was a prayer request. Are you following me now? We prayed on it and God gave her how many children? Triplets. God gave her triplets. One, two, three. For the eight years. God gave her triplets. They are all alive. They are healthy. They brought the cups and the tray of the dedication for me. I just called her as a witness because she's a witness. Let me tell you something. The Bible says children are a heritage from the Lord. I don't care what spell. I don't care what the hospital is saying. Even if they say there is no womb, that's nonsense. The Bible says who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not declared it. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Mommy, you will see the hand of God. Whatever has taken the place of that baby in your womb, it will give way. You will return back with testimonies. There's fire burning my hands and the Lord instructs me to lay my hands on you. Please lay your hands on your stomach. As I lay my hands on you, the fire of God will burn off that nonsense. Hallelujah. And as I pray for them, a point of contact to many of you who know some people, they have tried, they have prayed, nothing is working. We have come to call that devil a liar tonight. Are you hearing me? Now in the name of Jesus, womb be open right now womb be open now mommy return with your child return with your miracle baby baby girl baby girl look at me madam you are returning with a baby girl the name of jesus christ what the doctor said god is changing it within now and the next two weeks you will pass out all kinds of substances you will take in and you will give birth. Let her go. Out! Now! Out! This is, I'm seeing a spirit holding her womb. Release her now! Now! By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, 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 Madam, let your womb be open. Return with your miracle children. Who again? If you're standing for somebody... Miracle babies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracle babies return with your testimonies. Hallelujah. Madam, go and return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family that has been trying to build a house, it has reached Lintel level, but nothing more again. This has been for years. Who is that? The Lord is showing me something. Please. Come. Look at me. Look at me. 
Wait, uh -uh. I will know if you are the one. All of you look at me. The power of God will come upon one person. That is the person. But I'm going to pray for you for coming out. No problem. Don't worry. Even if you are seated, I just want to minister directly. All of you look at me. Lord, you gave me a sign. Right now, whoever that person is, let the fire of God come in a mighty way. Now! I use the remaining part of you as a point of contact. Every demonic thing keeping that building, as I lay my hands on you, I tell you finance will come from everywhere. Shake it, take it. Maka protokote brasha, mate kretos kopre, reke teke te, reke proso prosh, reka tabali kapos, ma preke telekos, mam protos kopre gete, kosha talaka tapreke de balarabash, raka tapreke te, building projects, building projects, God is visiting in the name of Jesus, supernatural testimonies, some of you before the end of the year, before the end of the year, the hand of the Lord will bring resources. Come, madam. You came out for building, but what God is going to do is more than building. You are a very good woman. Hold on. Where is your child? They are at home. Three things the Lord is going to do before now and the end of the year. Wait, madam. Let me tell you first. Number one, there will be radical financial shift in your family. I've not even touched financial issues. Number two. Number two. This is what is going to happen. What do you do? What do you do? Yo? I'm a teacher. You are a teacher. I see a lot of favor. I see you, this woman is a very good woman. Very good. She say amen. A very good woman. You can know you are good. Some of you are bad. She knows she's good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have a daughter. You have a daughter. What's her name? Joy. Joy. The Lord says, I should tell you, it's time for her to leave her name in the family. I don't know her name. That's why God said, I should, I should ask you of her name. Joy. Madam, you will come back and you will testify. It's a mighty visitation. Lord, confirm your word with signs. Did I pray for you? You're a businessman. You do not even know. But you're a major businessman. Come. You have not started anything. You don't know anything. Go and read. Let me tell you, my brother. What do you do? Civil you're a civil servant. You are going to do business in a mighty way. And God is going to prosper you in a very mighty way. Are you following me? We have not touched the area of finance. We'll come. Because there are many families here. This is an issue. We'll address that. But for now, let me just pray for you for what you came for. Let mama go free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did I pray for you? Deliverance comes now. Deliverance comes now. You will let her go. Your body is afflicted. Deliverance comes now. Shake it up. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, deliverance comes now. Come. Look at me. Button the other shirt. You need to be serious with God. Huh? You are young, but you are not serious with God. But God loves you. Huh? When it's time for altar call, just run and come and stand. Okay? God loves you and he wants to use you. Wow. Sister, that fair lady, please run and come quickly. The yoke of delay is ending in your family. See, look at me. You don't know why I'm saying you should run. Don't do woman, woman. I'm saying run. These are instructions. You understand? Please go back and run out. Don't be embarrassed. God spoke to me. I'm not doing foolish things. Come. Don't worry, I'll hold you so that you don't need Hold my hands. Hold my hands. It's both of your hands. 
I saw a measuring tape and the Lord says it is the time for favor are you following me Lord confirm your word right now in the name of Jesus Christ your family will come with rejoicing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord please bring out your prayer request start passing it out while we address now if you are sick in your body please hear me any kind of sickness it's time for you to come out right now come out and line up here for healing any kind of sickness please come and line up here for healing while they do that ushers everybody pass your prayer request to the last person by the side outside please please don't miss it god answers prayers here Look at how many people are coming for sickness. You see how the devil is a is a is a is a liar. Welfare. Can I get a cup of water, please? So I can drink. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye